Welcome to the History Maven. Thank you for joining me on today's episode. We're going to be answering the question, How did a salami sandwich give Leonardo Nortobatolo a 10-year prison sentence? Sit back, relax, and let me explain how Gabagool got this Italian cat burger captured. In today's History Maven video, we'll be talking about the Antwerp Diamond Heist. The year is 2003 in Antwerp, Belgium, the diamond capital of the world. More diamonds are bought, sold, and stored in Antwerp's diamond centers than any other location. Enter Leonardo Nortobatolo. He rents a small, mostly unfurnished office in the diamond center for two years. This debonair gentleman introduces himself as a jewel dealer and he easily charms all those around him with his humor and confidence. Leonardo dresses well and he knows the jargon of the jewelry business. He lunches with other dealers and they converse about the luxuries that their profession affords. Skiing, racing, travel, the finest cuisine. The Antwerp diamond tears except Norto Batolo with open arms. But he doesn't just hobnob with the wealthy. He makes great effort to small talk with the clerks and guards at the World Diamond Center about their families and their weekend plans. No one suspects that the charming and seemingly wealthy Norto Batolo has an ulterior motive. But Leonardo had done the math. Number one, over $16 billion worth of diamonds pass through Antwerp every year, and the majority of dealers store their diamonds at the World Diamond Center. Number two, burglary in Belgium, where the center was located, gave a maximum five-year prison sentence for burglary should a thief be caught. Even if a person were to steal millions of euros, the prison sentence could not exceed five years. Number three, Norto Batolo's home country of Italy made extraditing criminals extremely difficult at the time, so if Leonardo committed a crime in Belgium but could evade capture long enough to make it back to Sicily, well, he could get off scot-free. And this equaled an opportunity too good to pass up. Now, after the heist, Leonardo gave an interview to Wired magazine, in which he said that it all began when an unnamed Jewish diamantaire, whom he called the mastermind, randomly sat next to him at lunch one day while he was twirling his pasta, and this stranger proposed breaking in to the Diamond Center's vault. Yes, I too thought it was strange that Leonardo found the need to bring up the supposed mastermind's religion so frequently. But the majority of dealers that head the diamond exchanges in Antwerp are Hasidic, so he may have been trying to implicate an exchange owner in this heist. Or, maybe it was Kaiser Sose. You see, many question if Leonardo was approached by a mastermind, or if he were the one to pull the plan together. Now, Leonardo was not just some good-natured businessman with super fresh suits. He was descended from one of the oldest crime families in Sicily and had been suspected in many burglary cases in his own home country. He was even a member of the School of Turin, not the well-known international school, but a criminal group that focused primarily on heists. He's even been fingered as perhaps being the head of the Cosa Nostra in Sicily. But... Let's go back to Leonardo's version of events. This mastermind asked him if it were possible to break into the vault. He gave Leonardo a tiny spy pen that was loaded with a very small camera so he could take images of the vault's mechanics. Leonardo Nortobatolo, armed with his pen camera, went to his safe deposit box like he did every day. This box happened to be right next to the vault, and he talked to the guards as he did every day, but he was secretly taking pictures of the safe. He reported to the mastermind, nope, mm -mm, nope, absolutely not. It's not possible to break into this vault. The vault itself had 10 points of security, including Doppler radar, infrared heat detectors, a seismic sensor, a magnetic field, and a lock with millions of possible combinations. And constant security. Leonardo gave the mastermind the photos, and he went on his merry way for a number of months. And then one day the mastermind called him to a room in the Diamond Center, where an exact replica of the vault had been created, and a team of men hired by the mastermind introduced themselves by nicknames. An old man said, I am the master of keys, I can pick any lock. A large fellow whom they called the monster said, I am an electronics whiz. 
A gentleman known as the genius said, I can pass bypass any alarm system. Well, Leonardo accepted the mission, and he brought in his lifelong friend Speedy to assist in the heist. They decided that the heist would go down on February 14th, Valentine's Day. It was also the day that Venus Williams was playing in the Proximus Diamond Games Tennis Tournament for the Diamond Encrusted Tennis Racket Trophy. Oh, it was a huge moment for Antwerp to have the superstar tennis player in their midst. Antwerp loves tennis almost as much as they love their diamonds. The staff and patrons of the World Diamond Center were distracted by the ongoings and all the spectators that were in town for the tournament. So that evening, Leonardo went to his safe deposit box chit-chatting with the guards who granted him access. He pulled a can of hairspray from his sports coat and sprayed a film of it over the heat and motion sensors. The guards were watching the camera and they said they saw him playing with the hairspray can while they were watching the CCTV, but they had been dealing with Nortobatolo for two years. A little hair product in the vault was nothing to be concerned about. They knew the man liked to look good. So later, the thieves snuck in through the only window not heavily covered by guards or cameras. They bagged the cameras. They covered the sensor with a styrofoam box in case the hairspray were off. They attached a piece of metal to the magnetic sensor to avoid tripping that alarm, and they rewired internal alarms. They had a giant replica key, but the actual key was just there inside an unlocked closet in the room, so they didn't have to risk using a possibly imperfect key. And tripping that alarm. They had seen the combination code that would be required to access the room via recorded CCTV footage. The monster, the genius, the key master, and Speedy worked in the dark, only cutting on their flashlights when absolutely necessary. Norto Batola was waiting in the car and listening to a police scanner. When the men were done, they snuck away into the chilly night without an issue. Was all to be well forever? Now, police argued that the combination code was too small and blurry to be read via video. It was strangely fortunate that no guards were present and that the master key had been left out. Antwerp detectives suspect some inside connections, but no proof of internal cooperation was ever found. Norta Patolo and Speedy were dashing off through the Belgium National Forest territory called the Flor Dambos with their loot and a bag full of incriminating papers in the back seat. The idea of the business cards, plans, phone numbers, and trash from the Diamond Center being in such close proximity to them, why that just sent Speedy into a full-blown panic attack. He demanded that they burn the evidence immediately. Norto Batolo stopped the car to scout out a suitable place. He left Speedy in the vehicle while he scoped out an abandoned house he spotted. When he got back to his vehicle, Speedy was throwing trash all over the forest floor. It was too dark to pick up all the trash, and they were in a hurry to stash the diamonds and cash they'd just stolen, so they surmised that they were seemingly in the middle of nowhere, far from Antwerp. I mean, what were the chances that someone would see this little pile of garbage and make the connection? Now, if you have been a teenager in a rural area, you know that the thing to do is party in an isolated build. There, you can listen to your trap rap or emo screamo at a loud volume, drink watery beer, and slobber on other teenagers without your parents breathing down your neck. This happened regularly in the Flor Dambos to the owner of the land, and uh, he found all that damning evidence when he came out. He came to survey his property on February 15th, expecting to find teenager trash from another party, only to find an amassment of a different kind of rubbish. Why he was cursing the local yokel teens when he noted it wasn't the usual bottles of Duvel or dirt-covered Durex. There were envelopes from the Antwerp World Diamond Center, currency from various European countries, and was that a half-eaten sandwich? The landowner immediately called the police who realized what they had on their hands. The notes and cards from the debris pile along with the footage of Norto Batolo spraying the sensor gave authorities a good picture of what had happened. In an attempt to thwart suspicion, Leonardo Nortobatolo went to his office in the Diamond Center as usual. He had a friend with him, Antonio Folletti. Leonardo chatted with the guards and visited his security deposit boxes he always did, but this time, police were waiting for him. 
Valetti dashed off like his feet were on fire. Leonardo agreed to take the police to his house where they could search, but he was clearly stalling, pretending he couldn't remember what direction his apartment was in, and pretending that he couldn't understand them due to a language barrier. But they figured out without him where he was. And they came there just in time to see Norto Bertolo's wife, Adriana, and his pal, Faletti, and Faletti's first wife, Judith, exiting the apartment with a rug full of diamonds. I know. Ugh. But this was only a fraction of the diamonds that had been stolen. Even when the rest of the heist team were searched, the bulk of the jewels were nowhere to be found. Norto Bertolo claimed that many of the bags were empty when he got to them. He said that the jeweler they called the Mastermind must have warned many of the diamond owners to pull their jewels out of their boxes before the heist so they could claim it was stolen, get the insurance money, and then resell the diamonds under the table. Leonardo insisted the Mastermind never showed up for his cut. It must have been an insurance scam all along. Because diamonds are difficult to trace, most of the diamonds were not insured at all, hence why they were in such a secure vault. A lot of the original diamond owners received no compensation, and there is serious doubt that the mastermind of the crime is anyone other than Norto Batolo. That salami sandwich found on the forest floor, along with a bag of very incriminating evidence, contained Norto Batolo's DNA. There was little he could do but accept the guilty plea. During trial, he never gave up any of the names of his accomplices, and when Norto Batolo was given ten years, he served his time fairly quietly. He was given a 10-year sentence and a fine of 1 million euros, but he only served five of those years and was paroled. Well, until he broke parole and failed to pay back his fine and had to serve out the rest of his sentence. All the others in his gang and his wife Adriana were given five years, with the exception of Folletti and Judith Zweep, who received no time. The Master of Keys was never identified and therefore never tried. Today, Norto Batolo is a free man. It is speculated that Norto Batolo still has the millions of dollars of missing diamonds. But with the ways being watched, it's unclear how he could access and liquidate those diamonds. Now, I have blurred out this photo because it comes from Leonardo's social media, but rest assured that he's looking fit, tan, and handsome after serving his full sentence. I don't think he would mind my little baby channel sharing his photo. Something tells me he isn't really easily ruffled by being the subject of attention, but he is under a film studio contract. You see, it's well known that Paramount Pictures paid him a small sum for a story, but the project was shelved for years. Italian newspapers are now reporting that Amazon TV is casting for a program. Now, this is a translation, but everybody loves diamonds. And it is a TV show based on the Antwerp bank heist. Hmm. I know for one that I'll be watching. I'm thinking about Leonardo DiCaprio as Leonardo Nortobatolo. Who would you cast? Thanks for watching.